Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Jake Gordon and Alex Lord. Georgia got their first, you know, I don't want to call it a huge signature win, but it was a signature win, top, twin match, top 12 matchup. I mean, Missouri, you know, their only two losses are a very close game against LSU, and they played uh, Georgia pretty hard in this game. But, uh, I, Jake, I wanted to get your thoughts. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, just how Georgia looked. Were you surprised at all uh, that, it, that it was a little closer than I think you expected uh, coming into the week? Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I'm a little bitter because I had the spread in this game. This, be, this game was very poorly officiated for both sides. I think uh, I've seen a lot of Missouri and Georgia fans agreeing on that. I don't really know what was up with that. I don't think it had a huge impact on the outcome, but there were a lot of uh, a lot of head scratchers in there. I think overall, if, I think if you're Missouri, I don't. You have to be pretty. I, it's tough to say happy. Uh, you got to be pretty pleased with how you perform. This is the second year in a row you've come out and competed with Georgia. You go on the road. I mean, it's basically a one score game. Uh, they ran the ball effectively. The running back was getting, you know, some big chunks. I think they had a good game plan and uh, you know, they're definitely a program that's on the up and up, but uh, for Georgia, you know, I think it was business as usual. Um, I, don't, I don't think they made a lot of mistakes. I don't think they did anything special, but I think that they played, you know, just about mistake free football. Uh, Dylan Bell had a fumble on a kick return, but I think he got back on top of it. Um, other than that, you know, it was just business as usual. You kind of came out and you beat an inferior opponent, but Missouri had a good game plan. They were in this thing until the end, uh, which I was a little surprised with. Georgia got, you know, two big interceptions. The Nazir Stackhouse interception was hilarious. And then uh, Javon <laughs> Bullard got a pick to seal it. But, yeah, I, I think Missouri played about, you know, the, the, you know, they get a turnover. They get something to bounce their way. They end up winning that game maybe. But, uh, yeah, it was just Georgia playing Kirby Smart, uh, mistake-free football, and that's the reason they won the game. Nazir Stackhouse is an absolute elite name for a defensive lineman. Uh, everybody likes a fat guy interception. Should have been a pick six. Uh, I don't know how they got that ankle at the very end. Uh, Georgia obviously converts there. Um, but, yeah, I was I was pretty shocked. I did think Missouri was going to cover, uh, but I thought it was going to be of the backdoor variety. I thought, you know, uh, they were going to be able to uh, – throw the ball and, and I guess in a prevent defensive look, uh, they shocked me a little bit. Um, Luther Burden came out on fire and then was quieted by, um, excuse me, I'm Lasseter. I'm Kamari, La Kamari Lasseter. Yeah. He had guys, a, a first round pick. Well, I, I don't know why anybody's shocked. I mean, George is a football fact, an NFL factory at this point in Kirby smarts tenure, but that guy uh, really showed out, had a big game. Luther Burden came out and, I thought he was going to, you know, have a, a a signature game, you know, 150 yards, two touchdowns. And after that first drive, I was like, oh, yeah, here it comes. And then Lasseter quieted him. So I, I, I was shocked there. Um, but I was shocked all around just how the game played out. It went a little less – than I expected. I did expect Missouri to uh, cover just of the backdoor variety, as I said. Um, Georgia's got another big one against Ole Miss, but I think that you got to be pretty pleased if you're a Georgia fan. Um, I know you probably, ideally, you want to blow everybody up. You know, that's what you want in an ideal world, but that's not going to happen. Uh, and I think that you won and you did good things. Beck, still a guy. I mean, still a good. I, 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 for your sake, if I was a Georgia fan, I'd hope he'd come back. But he's kind of playing himself on a trajectory now that, you know, you might lose Beck after just one season. He, is play he makes a throw every single week now where you go, oh, that's a Sunday throw. Every single week now yeah. he has a couple of Sunday throws where you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to play in the league for a long time. You know, maybe put on some weight, come back, uh, you know, refine some of those other. Uh, not a great quarterback class as, as good as this year. You know, there's you're not right. a Caleb Williams, I don't think, at least next year. So, yeah, I think that's a possibility. But, yeah, someone else I wanted to talk about, too, was Julian Humphrey, the cornerback uh, across from Kamari Lasser. Both those guys had a great game. It was clear that this Missouri uh, passing attack was going to carry the day. You limit Brady Cook to a sub, you know, 50% completion percentage, 212 yards. I think this is the first time Luther Burden hasn't gone for 90 yards in a game, like, all year. Uh, I mean, he's just been going nuts. So they did a great job. And somebody somebody pointed this out, and I really love this point. They said, you know, this isn't, you know, a Georgia team that typically is just going to be like, oh, they won because their defense just overwhelmed the other team. And, you know, they have a really good offense, but it's not just, you know, 60 points a game automatically every time. They just say they do the small things well. You know, they have the intangibles. They have that, you know, buy into that Kirby smart philosophy. And that's why they're winning games. And it's not, you know, it's not how it's used to how it used to look. And I think it makes them a little more vulnerable, uh, especially in a game like next week, which we'll talk about. But other than that, you know, you can't apologize for winning. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. And I think both of you guys kind of touched on it. And we talked about it yesterday, how, you know, there's eight, teams nine teams ten teams that on any given saturday like 
they could win on a neutral field. Like it's not, it's not your typical college football playoff thing where you, you only have maybe two teams that could win it all or something like that. And Georgia's obviously been at the forefront of that conversation. You know, this, this year is probably going to come down to games like that, where you just don't make mistakes. Like whoever makes the, the, the bigger mistakes throughout the game. And I know that sounds silly, but I don't think it's been that way in college football for quite some time. You know, Georgia could probably make three or four mistakes in a game and still beat uh, you know, a really good team or a really good Ohio State team or something like that, or, or they could still slaughter TCU. So this year, I think whoever gets in, it's going to come down to those like who does, or even before you get in the SEC championship against Alabama and stuff like that. You know, those games are going to come down to just, you know, who executes more because I don't think there's a dominating force. Georgia certainly has looked vulnerable at times, but at the same time, who do you trust more than Kirby Smart? Maybe Nick Saban, a, a squad to like go out there and make the least amount of mistakes and when you know the lights are on you and everything all the pressure is on you who do you trust more I mean it's Kirby Smart and Nick Saban and that's why when I look at who's going to win the national championship this year even though they haven't looked amazing every single game that's where I put my money on I, I don't think that's necessarily wrong we watched Michigan make every single mistake they possibly could against a you know, a, I'll call it what it is, a bad TCU team. Obviously, they won the Big uh, Big 12, and then they went to the national championship. But Georgia showed who that TCU team was. They were overachievers, and Michigan ran into, you know, a perfect storm of making every single mistake they possibly could, and TCU capitalized on every single mistake. I don't think that's the case this year. I don't trust Michigan and Jimbo – or Jimbo – and Jim – Harbaugh and uh, J.J. McCarthy. I know they've learned. I know J.J. McCarthy is projected to be an NFL quarterback and all that and all that noise. But I don't trust him. I don't trust Ryan Day. I certainly don't trust Mike Norvell. I know the Florida State Seminoles are somebody that not enough people are talking about. Have some very impressive wins over Clemson and F and uh, LSU. But I don't trust Mike Norvell. He hasn't been to that stage. Jordan Travis. I don't trust that guy. Yeah, you said it. I trust Kirby. It's a list of two. I trust Kirby Smart and Nick Saban, and that's about it. And you could talk about Dan Lanning. I mean, cut from the yeah. same cloth. Yeah. That, that, that's one guy that he hasn't been there. But if there was one guy that I'm trusting that hasn't been there, it, it well, then maybe Sark. Game, if you want to talk that, about that a tweet. Washington game was a tough look. That Washington game was a tough look, though, when he was going at a fourth on fourth down like every yeah. time. And hey, they still almost won that game. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, maybe you learn from that. You know, you're going to get Washington again at the end of the year with an opportunity to probably play for the college football playoff. But I really do think it's one of those years and it's going to be so exciting to watch oh. how it plays out because I mean, we're going to talk about one of the biggest games that could decide a lot of it because I think there's more college football playoff implications in this Georgia Ole Miss than people are talking about it. So we are going to discuss that huge SEC matchup after the break.